Good evening and welcome to the 23rd Annual Coatesville High School Sports Hall of Fame Induction Banquet. We are thrilled to once again welcome everyone back to the Coatesville Country Club to honor and give recognition to Coatesville Athletics. We are grateful every year for the continued support of the Coatesville Faithful. We could not do this without all of you. Thank you. I would also like to bring your attention to the members of the Hall of Fame Committee and ask them to please stand and be recognized. These two dozen individuals, committee members, please stand up. These two dozen individuals work hard year round. There's one committee member um, tonight who needs to be singled out. He has been a constant for all 23 years, including his service as a past president. His contributions and influence cannot be understated. He has recently stepped aside from an active role, but tonight the Hall of Fame committee would like to honor him with the title of Committee Member Emeritus, a man who needs no introduction from his career as an educator and coach. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ross Kershey. Accepting this honor for Ross, who could not make it tonight, is his son, Scott. Um, I will read the plaque. Scott is actually one of our escorts tonight, but we are presenting this to Ross this evening. Coatesville High School Sports Hall of Fame. On this day of October 21st, 2023, the Coatesville High School Sports Hall of Fame bestows to Ross Kershey title of Committee Member Emeritus with all rights and privileges accorded by bylaws. With appreciation for 23 years of dedication and leadership, the 2023 Hall of Fame Committee. I want to thank the uh, Hall of Fame for doing this for my father. Uh, he intended on being here tonight, but almost everyone in this room knows him. Uh, he went into a nursing home on Thursday, and he's not doing well, and I ask all of you to keep him in your thoughts and prayers for my father, because he did want to be here tonight. One quick story, this is a, very briefly. In 19, September 1956, my father came to Coatesville to start teaching. He was Walt Funk's assistant coach for basketball and track. And he said he came to Coatesville, he was gonna get some experience for a couple years and then move on to a better place. <laughs> 42 years later in 1998, he was still teaching at Coatesville High School and he always said, there's no place better than Coatesville. And that's why he stayed here. So thank you very much to the committee and my father loves the city of Coatesville, and he gave his life for the city of Coatesville. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Once again, we have another impressive induction class, and at this time, I would like to introduce the inductees and their respective Hall of Fame committee escorts. The 2023 Max Stuber Award winner is Bill Swaggart, escorted by Pat Langan. Receiving the Founders Award is the late Dr. Horace K. Bonsell, Jr. His wife, Helen, is escorted by Mike Loeb. Okay. 
can turn. Okay. Tom Panula, escorted by Scott Shortledge. Allison Haight Hopkins, escorted by Dave Lapp. <laughs> Mike Randler Sr., escorted by Dave Rohde. Elise McDonald, escorted by Carl Smith. <laughs> Kurt Marshall, escorted by Scott Kershey. Danny Patton, escorted by Ernie Perella. Chris Jones, escorted by Rob Fisher. Ashley Mendenhall Stauffer, escorted by Bob Coulter. <laughs> Emmett Hunt Jr., escorted by Francis Washington. Joseph Butch Hills, escorted by Dan Jones. Butch. Ladies and gentlemen, I present the Coatesville High School Athletic Hall of Fame Class of 2023. <laughs> Inductees, you may sit down and uh, enjoy your dinner. I'd like to at this time bring Hall of Fame inductee and committee member Carl Smith to the podium to deliver tonight's invocation. Congratulations. Good evening and, and um, welcome to the festivities and congratulations inductees. Um, some of the committee might take umbrage with me, but I'm going to take just a moment 
we have something very much to be thankful for this evening. Our president, Jeff Chalfont, um, is, is a walking miracle. Um, le yes, last year, last year, um, had an accident while he was in his automobile and was dead for a while. And um, he has fought his way back. And uh, I think we, you, you told me back in November, right before Thanksgiving. And so we're grateful that he's here. And uh, you wouldn't have known that if you didn't know his story. But uh, Jeff, we are so grateful for you and thank you. We just give you, want to give you a hand and, you know. Well, let's give thanks. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the young ladies, young men who are being inducted. We're grateful to have had the opportunity to watch them, to encourage them, to correct them. We thank you for our time here this evening. We pray that our time will be well spent. We thank you for the food, for the hands that prepared it. We ask you, Lord, to watch over us this evening. We thank you for us in your son Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Bon appetit. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Carl. I did not expect that. I'm already nervous tonight. <laughs> Continuing a yearly tradition, would everyone please rise and join in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, and please remain standing for a rendition of God Bless America, led by Hall of Fame member Rose DeSantis. Their flag is in the left-hand corner. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in singing God Bless America. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. Thank you, Rose. Uh, I want to once again extend a sincere thank you to the Coatesville Country Club, their willingness to work with our committee to make each year's banquet a special night and the hospitality shown to all of us is very much appreciated. To event manager Melissa O'Hara and everyone on her staff, thank you. Uh, one final announcement before dinner, uh, as is customary, the bars will remain closed until the conclusion of the induction ceremony. Thank you, enjoy your dinner. We will get underway and uh, the, the staff will continue to uh, serve the desserts, but we can get the program started uh, while you eat your dessert. We have a, a, a big program tonight. And I would like to uh, point out that we are the Coatesville High School Sports Hall of Fame. And the Coatesville High School is very accommodating to us. And if you haven't already, you need to get down to the intermediate school and see the Hall of Fame plaques that are on display in the lobby. It's quite impressive and the school district allows us to do that and they are very supportive of us and um, we appreciate that. And tonight I would like to acknowledge representing the Coatesville School District is Cash Principal Brian Changer. Brian understands the importance of the Hall of Fame to the community and is always ready to assist. 
also school board president and Hall of Fame inductee and committee member, Rob Fisher. Also here tonight is our new athletic director, Lisa Luciani. Lisa, in the back. Uh, Megan Gears, the athletic direct department secretary. Megan. And Mark Cunningham is our plaque engineer. Thank you, all of you, for every, everything that you do for the committee. I'd also like to call everyone's attention to the cover of our Hall of Fame banquet program. This is the fourth year that we have had Coatesville High School art students design the cover as part of a scholastic contest. The winning design this year was submitted by Evangeline Hunt. The enthusiasm of the students to be a part of this endeavor is exciting to see, and the committee thanks Ms. Roberta Presser and the art department for once again supervising this event. Thanks also to committee member Josh Kranz and his Coatesville Run Seaville organization for designing and printing this year's program booklet. Excellent job. This is uh, one of the nicest programs we've had. And at this time, um, I would like to pull the winning ticket for tonight's 50-50 drawing. Two oh two five two nine nine is tonight's winning ticket. And the winner's share tonight is three hundred dollars and you can come up to the podium at the end of the banquet and collect your winnings. Thank you for supporting us. And I'd also like to, um, you know, we are a nonprofit organization and I'd like to extend a special thank you to our sponsors who are all listed on our sponsor banner. This is the second year for our sponsorship program, and as a nonprofit organization, their participation is crucial in helping us continue to recognize the great athletes of Coatesville High School. Uh, we are fortunate this evening to have one of the sponsors from the banner present, Shelly Hoffman, representing Cleveland Cliffs. Shelly? Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to all of the inductees. This banquet has become really special to me because eight years ago, my father, Jeff Hoffman, was inducted into the Coatesville High School Sports Hall of Fame a week before he passed away. Tomorrow will be eight years that he's gone. So this is now my way to honor his memory every year. So I couldn't think of a better way or a better cause for Cleveland Cliffs to support. For those of you who don't know, Cleveland Cliffs is the old Lucan Steel. And what I didn't realize when I came back home two years ago was that we actually supplied the steel for the Coatesville High School Sports Stadium. And I never knew that, even growing up here. Um, but Scott, please give my best to your father, um, the Silver Fox. Mr. Kershey was my dad's coach. My dad was a tremendous baseball and basketball player. And uh, please give him my love. And I believe Mr. Marshall, they're telling me, I have mixed reviews whether you did or didn't play with my dad. I believe he was class of 67, but he played basketball for many, many years. So the two of you may, may have hooped together. And forgive my somewhat casual appearance. The Phillies need a little help tonight. So <laughs> I wore my lucky Philly shirt. And I hope you'll all forgive me that I'm going to duck out early to be home in front of my television at 8.07. Like many of you athletes, you probably have superstitions and rituals when you get ready for a game. I have to be front and center for when that game starts. So congratulations to all of you. And it's very surreal to me that we now have a pitcher on our Phillies squad by the name of Jeff Hoffman. That was my father's name. I don't want to jinx us, but I think it's a sign that we're going to win the World Series this year. 
Congratulations again and go Phillies. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you, Shelly, and all of our sponsors, advertisers, and patrons. If it's something you think you might be interested in doing, see a Hall of Fame committee member because it literally keeps us going. This is our 23rd year, and this is a really, truly wonderful thing we do. And you noticed earlier when we presented um, Mr. Kershey with his award, everyone turned around and waved to the camera. Our banquets are videotaped every year, and you can watch them on Coatesville High School Sports Hall of Fame YouTube page. We have, this will be our 13th banquet that's, that's gonna be uh, broadcast on there. It usually takes uh, four to six weeks to edit and uh, put it on the page, but uh, it's interesting to watch some of the past banquets and some of the great athletes that have uh, been inducted. Uh, speaking of which, uh, there, there is a lot of confusion every year, too, about our voting process, and so I'll just briefly go over it. Um, it's explained on our Facebook page and is also outlined in the banquet. Uh, a resume listing high school athletic accomplishments uh, must be submitted for any athlete or coach to be considered, and it can be submitted either by the individual, a family member, or a friend. Once a resume is received, the candidate is placed on the next ballot, and their qualifications are discussed at the yearly voting meeting. Submitting a resume does not guarantee that a candidate will be voted into the Hall of Fame, only that they will be considered. In some cases, a candidate could be on the ballot for years before being elected, if at all. And remember, we only select eight, 10 to 12 inductees per year. In some cases, a candidate's qualifications are so impressive that they are selected in their first year on the ballot. As a matter of fact, we have two such cases this year. So if there's an athlete or coach that you feel is qualified, please put together a resume listing their high school athletic accomplishments and submit it to a Hall of Fame committee member. I would also ask if you can't do that, if you dropped it off at the athletic office, I'm sure Lisa would uh, receive it and get it to us. We have two, counting tonight, there was 250 inductees into our Hall of Fame and they're listed in the program. And 250 out of the thousands that have played sports. It's truly the best of the best. The J. Max Stuber Award has been given for the past 14 years for dedication and service to Coatesville School District Athletics. Normally, the Stuber family, on behalf of their father, present this award, but unfortunately, neither Tina nor Dave are able to attend tonight's festivities. So I ask Rob Fisher to please present this year's award. Rob is a member of the Hall of Fame Committee, Chairman of the Max Stuber Committee, and a past recipient of the award. Good evening, everyone. It is truly a privilege for me to pinch hit for the Stuber family this evening. Uh, unfortunately, David had another commitment, and unfortunately, uh, Tina is recuperating from uh, some health issues. So uh, I did have the pleasure of speaking with Tina last week, and she asked me that I please convey uh, her sincere disappointment for not being able to be here tonight. Uh, and in the conversation, I came to find that uh, Tina's only missed one banquet her entire time, and she had a... Uh, uh, a uh, commitment to a theater show. So uh, uh, keep her in your prayers. And uh, again, it's, it's an honor for me to do this. <clears throat> so I want to talk to the avid Coatesville High School boys basketball fans. Um, if you've gone to a game at the Coatesville High School, or you've gone on a road to a game, or you've been able to attend a playoff game that we're so privileged to host at the high school, uh, there's one constant that you will always see. Uh, and for the last 34 years, tonight's Max Stuber Award winner is William Billy Swaggart, official scorekeeper for 34 years. So I want you to walk through this with me. Six different athletic directors, nine different varsity coaches, 
and his experience and expertise has served them all well. That's over 1,600 JV and varsity games that he has been the official scorekeeper for. That's a lot of timeouts, a lot of rebounds, a lot of field goals, a lot of three-pointers. Uh, and you know, it, it says in the program, but it bears repeating, just like a baseball umpire or a basketball referee, you don't know they're there until they do something wrong. Um, and, and you never know that Billy's there because of his expertise over those 34 years. Uh, in addition, Billy has graciously given a substantial scholarship for many years now to a senior, a worthy senior member of the boys' basketball team, as well as a senior member of the cheerleading team. Uh, not only that, uh, it's not unusual to find when it comes playoff time um, that Billy has the team for a team breakfast. Um, and he takes care of that, along with thousands and thousands of packs of candy and gum and, and all those things that he has supplied for uh, both the players and the coaches. Billy is a 1974 graduate of Coatesville High School, and he's a lifelong resident. As an athletic director, I truly believe that Mr. Stuber would have been very pleased with tonight's nomination. You know, when you're preparing for games and you have a list of game workers, it's awful nice just to pencil in for 34 years William Swaggart, official scorekeeper. So, Miss Luciani, I see you back there. You understand what I'm talking about? Yep. Dial him up for another 30. <laughs> he, trust me, he'll be there. He'll be there. So I'm sure that Mr. Stuber would say that this year's Max Stuber Award winner is obviously a great choice. So without hesitation, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2023 J. Malcolm Stuber Memorial Award winner, William Billy Swagger. Believe me, if I look nervous, I am. Um, I would like to begin by thanking the Stuber family for their annual commitment to the prestigious award. Unfortunately, neither Tina or, or David could be with us this evening. David has a previous commitment, and Tina, recovering from health issues, we wish her a speedy recovery. As a lifelong coachful athletic supporter, I certainly recognize the importance of this award. I am humbled to accept an award named for a coachful icon, J. Malcolm Stuber. I would also like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee for the honor and, the cred and congratulate all the other inductees this evening. I would also like to thank the decades of high school administrators, athletic directors, coaches, and, in and entrusted in me to, official, to do the official scorebook for 30 year, four years of the regular season playoff boys basketball games, and I have did some girls games. Keeping score for over 1,600 games means a lot of time away from my family. I would like to thank all my family for their support and allowing me to truly do something that I thoroughly enjoy. Here with me this evening is my wife, Kathleen, my daughter, Trish and her husband Josh, my son Willie and his friend Julia, my grandchildren Kira, Sassy Allen, and Ryan, <laughs> and, and my stepdaughters uh, Jacqueline and her husband Alan, and my other stepdaughter Christina, a, a former Hall of Fame recipient, and my uh, sister-in-law Debbie Montgomery. Let me see here now. And I would be very remiss not to mention my first wife, Becky, my biggest supporter. Unfortunately, she's not here. When I look back over the years I keep the book, obviously my number one highlight would be winning the state championship in 2001, despite Coach Hicks forgetting the scouting tape that my wife Becky and my father-in-law Harvey had to deliver to Hersey at the last minute when they found it. 
That's just a joke. <laughs> just as important to me, all the relationships and friendships that I have, been ma have made over the years. Coaches, players, opposing coaches and players and referees. It does my heart good to this day r uh, running into and conversing with all these folks. In addition, I would like to recognize all the dedicated workers who worked alongside me at the scorer's table, especially my good friend, Janie Johnson. It was a team effort. Every one of these mentioned has enjoyed over hundreds of packs of gum and candy I provided. In conclusion, all my years leaving work early and traveling on school buses across the county and across state have been worth every minute to me. I am truly blessed to have had this experience and there's so many more years, I hope there's so many more years of success for the Coastal basketball team. Thank you. <clears throat> Congratulations, Bill. The Hall of Fame does not induct teams, but 13 years ago, we made the decision to give recognition to those squads that accomplished something special. We began by honoring those teams that won a state championship or were a state runner-up. Tonight, we are recognizing the 2004 and 2007 boys cross country teams, both of which placed second in the PIAA state championship meet. We would also like to recognize the 2006 boys cross country squad who had unquestionably the most successful season of any coastal sports team in history, which included district one championship, PIAA state championships, and last but far from least, winning the Nike team nationals championship. Would all team members, coaches, and other personnel please come up front to be recognized? All team members, coaches, and personnel, please come up front. At this time, I'd like to ask Dave Lapp to say a few words. Before turning the microphone over to Dave, I want to recognize and congratulate him for his upcoming election in the Chester County Sports Hall of Fame. Well done. Thank you very much, Keith. Keith. <laughs> so Keith Andrew was a, was a coach of these teams. Um, I assisted. From 1998 to 2007, Coachville Cross Country finished in the top six at the state championships nine times. We didn't rebuild, we reloaded. We're honoring three of these teams tonight, the 2004 state runner-up, the 2006 state champion and national championship, and the 2007 state runner-up. Uh, we're honoring these teams together because a lot of the athletes, the runners, overlapped. They ran in more than one of these teams. So I'm gonna start with uh, the 2004 team. We had 22 team members representing Coachville High School at the state championship meet. Ellis Wilson, Amin Garnett. They were the senior leaders. Tom Panula, Jason Leonard. Who else, Tom? They were, the, they were sophomores. We finished second by five points to Cedar Cliff, who was nationally ranked. I believe that's what brought, that finish brought Coatesville cross country into the national limelight. We had been in the state for quite a while. Everybody knew who we were. But now, because of that finish, people started to look at us nationally. The 2006 team, we set a state record of 26 points. Nobody knows that because everybody looks at the national championship. 26 points is amazing. The previous record was from 1944 for Mount Lebanon. Um, national championship, if you want to watch that, Nike, teamnationals.com, 
Google 2006, you can watch the whole race. We ran as Bridgetown in order to follow PIAA rules and not disqualify our underclassmen for further uh, PIAA competition. We had to run with a different name, but everybody knew who we were. And if you watch that film, that video, they always talk about Coatesville. They didn't talk about Bridgetown. The red, the ugly red and blue is us. <laughs> Members of that team, Tom Panola, Jason Leonard, Kyle Dawson. <clears throat> I miss Chris. Where's Chris? You're on the wrong side, Chris. Chris Masato. <laughs> Chris Masato was a sophomore. <clears throat> I do want to mention one more team member, and that's Owen Dawson. Owen is in special forces for the United States. When you see they're being dispatched, say a prayer for Owen. Two thousand seven, um, special place in my heart because the accomplishment of these guys, nobody expected anything, but we knew we were able. Uh, they finished second, 17 points behind North Penn. Outstanding race. Uh, members of the team, Chris Rosado is here, wrong side still. <laughs> Billy Hackmeister, Kevin Adlin. <clears throat> Those are the teams. Thanks, guys. We're good. Thank you, and you guys deserve the recognition tonight because they were some outstanding times. To understand where we are as an organization, it is important to know where we started. Tonight we are pleased to present our third Founders Award to another one of the originals, the late Dr. Horace K. Bonsell, Jr. Doc was a longtime treasurer of the Hall of Fame Committee and his dedication to Coatesville sports and all the student athletes was always on display. The committee is very pleased to present this award on behalf of Doc and welcome his son, Dr. Eric Bonsell, to accept on behalf of the Bonsell family. Yeah, I wanna of course, thank Jeff and all the Hall of Fame committee uh, for the honor that they're giving my father. And I know how I feel, my father would feel, my family feels. Uh, I, uh, I, mean, I could talk about Jeff a little bit, but I won't. He was four years my senior, and he uh, used to sit with me sometimes and teach me things about girls and other things. So <laughs> I, I've always appreciated the wisdom he bestowed to me. You know, I thought about what I could possibly do to, to complement and capture what my dad involvement in Coatesville Athletics meant, uh, and, and actually lines from a poem that was always a favorite of mine by William Wordsworth, Tintern Abbey, came to my mind. And the lines are, on that best portion of a good man's life, his little nameless and unremembered acts of kindness and of love. My father had many of these unremembered acts of kindness and of love, and I'm just going to share a few of them with you. A lot of you will remember my dad was a graduate of Coatesville. He went to University of Pennsylvania, undergrad, dental school. Then he had a naval deployment to Iceland and then came back to Coatesville to set up a dental practice uh, where he was for decades. What you probably don't know is that there were countless Saturdays and Sundays and evenings that he worked on Coatesville athletes' teeth, you know, free of charge, just taking care of kids. A lot of you are going to remember that my dad was a fixture at basketball games, football games, swim meets, home and away. What you probably don't know is that his love of athletics extended well beyond that. I mean, he was at Little League games, Summer League swim meets, Summer League basketball games. His love of sport and family extended even further. 
Uh, he attended his grandson, Andrew Bonsall, Michael Gorney High School college football games. A lot of you know that my dad was there in the early years of the, the Hall of Fame, serving with pride as treasurer. But you, what you don't know probably is his knowledge of Coatesville history. He, I grew up hearing tales, well, I was going to say I grew up tales of hearing people you probably haven't heard of, and one of the first ones going to be Hubie Marshall, but obviously Kurt's here, so not a good thing to say. <laughs> But, but I grew up hearing about Hubie Marshall, Gene Brown, Levi Blaylock, Harold Ford, Harvey Dixon, all these people that common conversation with me and my dad when I was growing up. He was just proud of everything coastal. Well, my younger brother, Rob, who was an inductee in 2009 for his stellar swimming career, when he got inducted, I thought my dad was going to explode with pride. Similarly, you know, his sister, my Aunt Joy, my cousin, Carol, they were inducted. My dad was ecstatic. It got worse than that. My sister married James Gorney. Well, who's that guy from New York? Well, he was a phys ed teacher, a track coach, and a runner himself. Well, he's only Central New York Coach of the Year and a Hall of, a Hall of Fame inductee in New York also. My dad was like, I won the lottery. I can't believe this. <laughs> a lot of you are going to remember maybe that my dad was on the school board when uh, Coach Ferry Senior High School was built. But you probably don't know that he had a really deep-rooted, deep-rooted feeling about academics. He saw sports as a good thing far beyond the competition. He knew the value of sports, life lessons, loyalty, hard work, grit, teamwork, the ability to win with grace and lose with dignity. It was way more than wins and losses. I'm going to tell one little personal story. With time running out, we were at Phoenixville. I drove the lane way too early, game was on the line, dumb move, typical point guard, stupid. I threw up a running one hand and I missed it. Crooms off, Phantoms take it down, they win the game at the buzzer. Where was Swigert then to run the buzzer and maybe handle things there? You know, I, I was like, I had lost the game. I was in tears, I come home. You know, what's my dad's response? You know, he arm around my shoulder and he said, look, Rick, he said, you know, no one person wins or loses anything, much less a game. Life lesson. So we can all remember here tonight, you know, Doc Bonds was a complete and total supporter of Coatesville Athletics, but he was a, a really kind, loving husband, father, and grandfather. I want to read to you, in closing, because I was warned not to talk too long, in closing, a letter that my dad sent me September 6, 1977, my freshman year at, at college. And it goes like this. All I ask of you now is to lay me huddled in your heart like my old green sweater kept in the closet to wear on a cold night. When there are no parties for playing, no good books for reading to keep you company, when you wonder if morning will ever rise again, wrap me around yourself snugly. Don't store me away in some attic. Just hang me somewhere where I can be of use occasionally. Eric, hang me softly in the front closet of your mind and remember, I'm there. Love, Dad. <laughs> Thank you. It's only fitting this evening, um, since we're recognizing the fantastic cross-country teams, that our first inductee, Tom Panola, as you can see, was a member of two of the honored cross-country teams. His cross-country accomplishments include two top 30 finishes in the state championship meets, including a sixth place medal in the 2006 season, and in the Steel City Invitational, which at that time was still one of the most prestigious meets in the state, Tom had three top 10 finishes. His cross country prowess carried over to the track where he earned two top 10 medals at state meets. It is also notable to mention that Tom graduated in the top 20 in his high school class and continued his athletic and academic career at LaSalle University. In addition to competing in division one cross country and track for five years, Tom earned a double major in mathematics and secondary education finishing with a master's degree in education. The Hall of Fame is honored to present for induction Tom Panola.
Good evening, everyone. It's a true honor to be here tonight uh, with all of you. Uh, actually, it's, it's a little surreal for me because, you know, being a part of the amazing teams that were just recognized, I never really thought about this moment because it was never an individual thing for us. Uh, it was always about making the team better. So being recognized in this way is truly a bit strange, but nevertheless, I am honored and humbled to be a representative of the cross country and track programs here tonight. Before I really get going, and uh, Mr. Dave Lapp did uh, note this a little bit, but I'll, I'll double down on it. Um, I'd, I'd like to take a quick moment just to ask the room uh, to fill their hearts with positive intentions to a member of our team uh, who's not able to be here tonight because he is currently serving our country. Uh, Owen Dawson, brother of Kyle, who is here tonight, uh, is stationed in Iraq at the moment, uh, serving as a member of the U.S. Marine Corps. So I'd ask that you keep him in your thoughts for a safe and expedient return. I'm excited to celebrate with him when he gets back. Yeah, thank you. You know, as I began thinking about what this speech might sound like, uh, I went in a few different directions. I thought about talking about how the thousands upon thousands of miles we put on our legs as long distance runners sticks with us to this day, mostly through the sounds of crackling bones every time we get up off the couch. Um, but nevertheless, it's there. Uh, or maybe talk about how intimidating of athletes we were uh, with our short shorts and jacked bodies at the time. Uh, or maybe uh, how I used to be able to eat a gallon of ice cream each night and somehow lose weight doing it. It's just not the case anymore. <laughs> uh, alas, I, I continue to be pulled back to, to one central theme through it all, which is gratitude. I imagine a person doesn't get many of these moments in their life. A chance to speak publicly about those who have had a profound influence on their life, which has directly impacted any success that they may have had. So the remaining time that I have, I'd like to do just that. I'd like to start with congratulating my fellow inductees for all their hard work and dedication that has led to tonight. Congrats and enjoy this moment. I'd also like to thank the committee for even considering me for this honor. It was truly a surprise and I'm beyond grateful to be mentioned in the same breath as any past inductee uh, and those that are here tonight as well. Next, I'd like to thank a group of people who I actually didn't even know in high school but uh, are a massive part of my life now and made the trip here tonight. So I want to say thank you to my sister-in-law, Jen, my father and mother-in-law, Dan and Meg Gallagher. Uh, having you here tonight truly means a lot, and I hope you know that. And of course, I'd like to thank my wife, Sam, for being here with me and helping me get prepared for this speech. We met on the LaSalle University Cross Country and Track Team, so I'm more than thankful that all this running stuff uh, led us to one another. <laughs> to my teammates, Thank you for building a community and culture of excellence for me to be a part of. I've made lifelong friends through the teams I was on, many of whom stood beside, beside me when I married Sam. Thank you for always pushing me to be better, for the competition, and for showing me that great things can be accomplished when you trust and work with one another. I'll never forget the miles and miles we've spent together laughing, bonding, and forming a family. And of course, great teams are made because they have great leaders. I think anyone could say that they are lucky if they have one great mentor or coach in their life. And I'm sure many people here would agree with that. While there are many that coached all of us at some point in time, we were beyond fortunate because we ended up having three of those people who I would love to recognize at this time. Mr. Keith Andrew, Mr. Dave Lapp, and Mr. Carl Smith. Thank you for always being there for us, the lessons we learned from you, and the deep connections you built with us. You know, working in education now myself, I understand more than ever the importance of creating a feel feeling of safety and trust. I can't show my gratitude enough for the time you spent with us, away from your own families, and developing us into not only great athletes, but truly great people. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
I'll never, I'll be forever grateful for having the opportunity to learn from all of you and hope that I can someday be half as good of a mentor, coach, and leader as all of you. Thank you. And finally, to the four people in this room who were and still are my rocks in life, my family. To my two big brothers, Mike and Anth, it's hard to put into words how much your friendship and support meant to me when we were younger. <clears throat> and I can't fathom a reality. I told Sam I was never going to get through this. <laughs> I can't fathom a reality where I didn't have the two of you in my corner. And I know any success that I might have had was because of the way I looked up to the two of you. I'm proud to be your younger brother, and I couldn't have done any of this without your steady presence in my life. I love you both. Thank you. <clears throat> and to my parents, there's just simply not enough time to talk about how much gratitude I have for the two of you. The sacrifices you both made to make sure the three of us had what we needed to be successful is immeasurable. Dad, you taught us the importance of hard work, passion, dedication, and persistence all of which were extraordinarily important to the way I approach life as both an athlete and a person. Much of anything I've accomplished is because of the values you instilled in us. I'll never forget your words, which told us that if we ever started a job, never leave it unfinished. And if you're going to do something, never do it half-assed because you're just going to have to start all over again. <laughs> Mom, what can you say to someone who spent more hours <clears throat> that we can count, driving you around from practice to practice, sometimes in the wee hours of the morning, someone who made it a priority to be at every single meet or team activity, and was the most consistent force in your life. I'm not sure how to answer that question, but I hope you know that none of it passed me by. I appreciate it more than I expressed at that time, and I'm so happy to get the chance to say that to you tonight. I love you both, and thank you for everything. I hope everyone enjoys this evening. Congratulations again to those being honored. I also just uh, received a note also uh, that our coach, Matt Ortega, is in the audience tonight. Matt, um, please stand up and be recognized. A uh, future Hall of Famer for sure. In keeping with the cross country theme, the next inductee is Allison Haight Hopkins. In her four year high school varsity career, she had two top 30 finishes in the PIAA District 1 meet and a 24th place medal in the 1998 state championships. She was a key member of highly successful teams that won several invitationals and three consecutive Chesmon championships. The 1998 team remains the only Coatesville girls team to qualify for the PIAA state meet, winning a bronze medal. Allison also garnered success on the track, earning 10 District 1 qualifying appearances, including two district medals. The Hall of Fame presents for induction Allison Haight Hopkins. Okay, I'm super nervous, so I'm probably just gonna read it. Okay. I love that it's a cross-country theme tonight. Um, I stand before you today humbled and honored to be inducted into this Coatesville Sports Hall of Fame. It's an incredible privilege to share this stage with so many remarkable athletes and coaches representing the school, city, and the sport that I love. Um, I'd like to begin by expressing my gratitude to my parents, who have always supported me and gave me rides, put up with my complaining, and supplied me with lots of pasta and Pop-Tarts. Um, I, of course, need to mention the two people who are most influential in my running back in high school and to this day, my coaches, Mr. Andrew and Mr. Lapp. Their level of dedication, as has already been said many times, and passion for the sport is unmatched. They would pick us up for practice every morning, fitting sometimes eight, and now I hear nine people in Mr. Lapp's Jeep Cherokee. We would squish on top of each other and listen to the oldies. Um, they provided breakfast for our team of hungry runners, including Donut Day, every Thursday. 
They would take us out to eat, swimming here at the, at the country club after 40 mile weekends, and would meet us when we'd miss practice to make sure we got in the miles. Um, and they would give us amazing banquets to recognize our efforts. I will be forever grateful and blessed by the commitment to me by these two coaches who saw something in me, even though it started out rough with me puking behind the bus at my first race. They helped me grow and foster a love and work ethic in running that continues in my life today. I've been able to pass down Coatesville Cross Country to my girls who have their middle school championships and high school districts next week. Um, lastly, I have to mention my teammates from here at Coatesville and into college that made it all the best experience that we still relive all the time to this day. Whether it was rolling down hills, playing tag, hiding in the woods at practice, or crying with my friend Shannon the first day of college because we were homesick. Um, these friends are the ones that I still run races with. We force our children to do the same. Um, we talk about famous runners, running shoes, coaching, and all the memories, good and bad. My friend and teammate Teresa and I decided in high school that we'd be old lady friends together, running races far into the ancient age groups. It looks like we're about halfway there. <laughs> meet, we still meet every, almost every weekend to run, sometimes in the dark, holding our pepper spray um, in the crazy heat or snow and chatting the whole time. There's not a running memory that doesn't include you, and you're the only one that knows how amazing it is for me to be here tonight. Thank you. Um, and I just want to thank the committee for this honor. I feel also very privileged and surprised and very, very grateful. Um, my last thing is I'm making a shameless plug, since it's a cross-country theme, for the Coatesville Cross Country Booster Club. The team is very light this year, and we could use all the support. So I have a Venmo, and we take cash or check. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Not just Hall of Fame inductees, but anyone who has played a sport at Coatesville can speak of the impact that the coaches have had on their lives, as we've heard tonight. Our next inductee, Mike Randler, devoted 30 years to guiding Red Raider student athletes, including 24 years coaching the boys' swim teams. During his tenure as swim coach, he can claim multiple District 1 and PIAA state medalists and a Daily Local News Coach of the Year award. Throughout his time at Coatesville, Mike also served as the head coach of the boys' volleyball and boys' cross-country teams. He was also an assistant coach of the 1974 boys' track team, which won a state championship. I present for induction Mike Randler, Sr. Uh, yesterday, my lovely wife said I had to write a speech, so I did. Four score and seven years ago, my four or five, oh, the wrong speech, I'm sorry, wrong page. <laughs> I'm bad. I think the first thing I should do, though, is thank my lovely wife for putting up with all those years that I coached, came home for late, late dinners. Uh, left early in the morning at 6 o'clock for early practices. And the other people I'd like to thank are my three, three children who are sitting here at our table. Um, Michael, Robbie, and Megan. They all became swimmers, not because they wanted to, but they did. <laughs> and the best part about it for me was they never missed a practice. They always had a way home. They couldn't be sick. So it worked out pretty good for them. A couple other people I would like to thank. Uh, one of them sitting back here because she has to sit. She just had her knee replaced. Emmy Lanot was our girls coach for years. And I don't know how she put up with me and the swimmers that we had at the time, but she managed. <laughs> Another young man who didn't make it tonight, uh, Coach and Dr. Ron Jenkins from Westchester University was very instrumental in helping me with my diving skills, and in particular with one young man who's sitting here, an All-American uh, Navy graduate, 
22 years Navy SEAL. Steve Rutherford, take a bow, Steve. I would be, a, I'd be awful if I went home and didn't say one more thing about my children. One of them, one of them, they were all good swimmers, but one of them managed to come home with a gold medal at States. I was not the coach. <laughs> as soon as I left and a new coach came, he suddenly got better. <laughs> it was a lot of fun at the state meet seeing him do such a good job, though. Just a couple of things that happened over the years that really made swimming a lot of fun for me. And Charlie Bach, who was here tonight, can attest to this, as can Danny Patton. We always had trouble when we went to the district meet. We could never win a relay. North Penn always won the 200 freestyle relay and a 400 freestyle relay. And for years, we tried to beat them. Well, finally, Charlie Bach and Brian McGinley and two other young men said to me, why don't we change around our relay? Normally, you'd put your fastest guy last. We put Charlie Bach first, Brian McGinley second, and our next two swimmers had a big lead. And the other teams didn't know what to do. We won that 200 freestyle relay by almost two seconds. <laughs> An hour later, we came back and did the same thing in the 400 freestyle relay. North Penn coach wouldn't talk to me for the next three years. <laughs> there was two plaques that were given out for those relays and we won both of them that year. So that was a real highlight for me. Some of the young men, and there were many, many that I could mention, but some of the young men that are unmentioned and not even in the Hall of Fame. Steve Rohde. Steve was a great high school athlete. When it came time for a big meet, a state meet or the district meet, he got sick every year. But he went on with a full scholarship to Penn State, became an All-American swimmer at Penn State. And, and Steve was a great breaststroker. Another one that I remember so well that isn't mentioned, Doug Ryder. Doug came on a team and he could barely make a length of the pool. Senior year, he swam 49 seconds in 100 free. He just retired a couple years ago as a U.S. Army colonel. Uh, he was a helicopter instructor and pilot. Uh, another young man, also an Army captain, Dr. Jim Grady, swam right here at Coatesville Country Club, played football and swam, did a great job, nice young man. Last but not least, and I know he's sitting here somewhere tonight, I talked to him, one of my first great swimmers and great individual in the classroom was Rob Bonsall. Rob, you out there somewhere? There he is. I would like to thank the committee for selecting me, and uh, it's been a wonderful evening to see all these lovely people and these athletes. Thank you very much. Ella Zay McDonald joins the list of exceptional high jumpers in our Hall of Fame. Through sheer dedication and hard work, he was a two-time state champion and also earned a silver medal, while twice earning all state honors. Taking his success to the national stage, Ella Zay placed sixth at the New Balance National All-American Meet with a jump of six feet, eight inches. The Hall of Fame is pleased to induct Elise McDonald to the class of 2023.
Um, let me set my timer because I was told not to go over five minutes. <laughs> so, all right. Um, uh, just to start off, like, um, honestly, like, I never would have ever thought that I would be in the Hall of Fame. Um, honestly, I never, I, I only ran track for one year. I, I, I was a football player. Like, um, that was like my first love, you feel me? Um, I can remember going to midget league games with uh, my friends and stuff like that. But, you know, like, it wasn't, it wasn't for me like I thought it was. Um, I actually started running track. Um, my junior year, it, I was playing football and it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. So then I kind of just decided that I was just gonna run track. Like, I just was like, literally, just literally one day I was like, I'm just going, I'm just jump. Like, I don't, I'm not doing this. Like, um, and I actually started at long jumping, but I wasn't good at long jump. I was garbage. Um, I was, I was garbage. I, I literally only started high jumping. I lied to you not because when I was, I want to say in ninth grade, my, um, summer school principal was coach Carl Smith. Um, and he kept me out of trouble. Like I literally was like so hard headed, like I was even hard headed even my senior high school, but whatever. Um, but like I was really hard headed and I literally started high jumping just because I respected him so much, which I still do to this day. I just like respected him so much. And um, I just decided to high jump. Like I literally worked out the whole summer from my 11th grade year going into my senior year and then like the first meet of the season I qualified for states and then it was just it was on from there like literally qualified for nationals and it was just like it was it was a nice thing like I just want to thank him I want to thank all the coaches um my family and my friends you know everybody that's like always supporting me from then to now um um dang I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous uh I can remember. Um, I can remember. Like I can still remember to this day. Like when we got the states, and um, it was we get to the state meet, and I literally I'm looking through my bag, and I left my jersey at home. And then like, it was funny because me and Coach Henry used to always go back and forth all the time because I would never want to let him have the last word. So then I'm like, literally, I can't find my jersey. And then I just look at him, and I'm like, Coach Henry, I I left my jersey at home. And he's like. See, that's what I'm talking about. You're not focused. Like, so I'm like, I'm like, what? Like, and then like, literally, we start jumping. And then like, I literally look at Coach Smith and then he looks at me and he's like, Elize, you won. And I'm like, what? He's like, you won. And then I just literally just started jumping up and down. I was literally so happy. So like I said, um, I just want to thank everybody. You know, thanks for the honor. Thanks for having me. Um, I really appreciate it. It's really, it's really a nice evening and just nice to see people that I haven't seen in a while and just nice to be uh, recognized for something that I really, like, really worked hard for. So, thank you. Congratulations again, Roger. Go with Craig. He's got to take some pictures downstairs of you. All right, thank you. Congratulations. Uh, before continuing, I would just like to ask all the Hall of Fame inductees that are in the audience tonight, please stand up and be recognized. Please. As I said earlier, this is the best of the best. And if you look in our program tonight, we have a list in the middle of the booklet of every Hall of Fame inductee per sport in the year they were inducted. And counting tonight's class, 251. Our next inductee, Dan Patton, joins his uncle Gene Patton and his grandfather Leonard Patton in the Cash Hall of Fame. Dan was a four-year varsity swimmer qualifying for states each year, earning all state honors during his sophomore and junior seasons. 
In that junior season, he was a part of the most successful relay team in the history of Coatesville swimming. He and fellow Hall of Famers Charlie Bach and Brian McGinley earned All-American honors in the 200 and 400 meter freestyle relays. Dan's 62 career varsity wins, combined individual and relays, place him fifth on the all-time school list. The Hall of Fame is pleased to present for induction Dan Patton. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate you guys honor me uh, tonight in the committee for nominating me. Thank you for that. Um, I was going to start off. You did mention that my uncle Gene Patton was inducted, and this is technically my second Hall of Fame speech. My grandfather Leonard Patton was inducted. He had already passed. I accepted that honor for him uh, so many years ago. I don't remember how long ago that was now. Um, I would, I would really like to uh, thank my, my family for being here tonight. Um, my wife, my three daughters, uh, really means a lot to have everybody here. So I started out swimming, and I don't know how good of an idea it really was to keep me doing it. When I was about six, seven years old, there was an old place called Chester Valley Swim Club that we used to go to, and uh, they used to put me in the backstroke. And apparently, from what my mom says, is I don't remember much of this, and you'll understand why. I used to swim directly into the wall. And so they used to set somebody up there, would put their hands to, to stop me. But uh, they thought it was OK, and, and I kept on going. And so I guess it all worked out to be, uh, to be a good thing. Uh, Chester Valley wasn't open too long. We moved on to Wagontown Swim Club. Uh, that's where I met my, <laughs> that's where I met my, uh, one, of my, one of my best friends still to this day, long time training partner, Charlie Bach. And, uh, and our coach there, she's here tonight. Uh, she coached the girls for a long time in high school too, Emmy Linett. So I want to say thank you to her. Um, she's one that really got me going, you know, got me started swimming. Um, and swimming's tough. It's not um, all these sports that we play, they're all very tough and you train hard. I played a lot of sports throughout my life. Uh, but swimming's a little different. You're in the pool, you're working hard, you really can't talk to anybody. When you do come up for air, they're, that's what you're doing. You're breathing. You're not, you know, you can't really talk anymore. And they, they blow the whistle, you get right back in, you go again. So it's just a, a nonstop thing. Uh, me and Charlie, we, uh, as we started swimming year long, you know, year round, I should say, we had a coach named Mary McNear. Uh, she was different. We weren't your typical swimmers. She used to uh, have us in the pool. We would have the big uh, five gallon buckets. She would rope them tie them to us with a rope and put weights in them. We would drag them up and down the pool. Uh, crazy unorthodox things like that that um, I guess made us, you know, the, the swimmers that we are today, um, which was a, you know, a good thing. Um, again, then we moved on. High school, uh, Mr. Randler was my freshman and sophomore coach. I want to say thank you to him for, you know, for letting me get in there as a freshman, get my feet wet keep everything going. We had lots of fun. Uh, junior, senior year was Dave Morris. He's not here tonight, but then he took over. And we had a lot of success. We had some really good teams. Like I said, Charlie Bach, Brian McGinley, who's in the Hall of Fame. Um, the relay that everybody mentioned that, that we did really well with, uh, that was Joe Trinfetti, where we all made All-American. Um, he's not here tonight, but he was the fourth member of that team. So, you know, he also did, did really well there to help us as, as well. Um, I would also like to thank uh, Mr. Fisher, Rob Fisher over there. He was the uh, weightlifting coach, and he'll tell you, he actually said it to me tonight, and I had it written down here. I was one of the few swimmers that he used to let into the weight room uh, to swim. You know, I wasn't your, as you can see, I'm not your prototypical tall, lanky swimmer. Uh, so thanks, Mr. Fisher, for helping me hit the weights and, uh, you know, get, get through it. <laughs> um, I would also like to thank, uh, she really helped us a lot, Charlie's mom, Laurie Bach, Mrs. C, as we call her. She, just as, as my mom and dad, took us everywhere. We drove us all over the place all the time. We swam at 
Immaculata College, we swam at Swarthmore College. I mean, we swam places I don't even remember going to in the middle of the summer because I was sleeping. In the morning, we'd get up 6 a.m., you know, be done practice back home by 8 o'clock. We'd come home. She always used to make us these oatmeal pancakes that were amazing. Uh, have to do that again sometime. <laughs> um, again, my mother and father driving us around as well. Um, like I said, we swam all year long, and it just never seemed to end in addition to when we were doing high school sports. Um, and again, to the committee, I just want to say thank you, Jeff. I really appreciate you nominating me. Um, with swimming, you know, the stats that you read, I never really knew about them. You know, I played baseball, I played other sports, I could tell you what those stats were, but swimming was just something, you know, it was a team sport, individually you swam, but you know, we didn't really keep track of all the stats like that, so um, I think it was pretty cool to hear it, I appreciate it, and uh, thank you again to everybody, and congratulations to everybody else going in tonight and all the members here, thank you. Uh, I was just informed that the Phillies have an early one to nothing lead. <laughs> Two. Coatesville basketball can point to an outstanding legacy of point guards. We actually have two being inducted this evening. Kurt Marshall was the floor general for two Red Raider teams that had a combined 45 and 6 record. He led the 1964 squad to the District 1 championship game at the fabled Plestra, back when only the league champion advanced to districts. Kurt garnered all Chesmont, all district, and all state honorable mention during his career. His 655 career points, 14 points per game, still ranks in the top 100 all time on the Red Raider list. Kurt now joins his older brother, Yubi, in the Cash Hall of Fame. This evening, the committee presents for induction, Kurt Marshall. Yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you. I, um, I didn't really prepare remarks. But then again, why should I? I did it all myself. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> it's the only lie that I will tell tonight. Um, and I do want to thank all of my teammates, not just the ones that I played for the school, but for all the thousands of hours of practice on the basketball courts around the city of Coatesville, especially just down the road here at what used to be Pastown Elementary School. We had a, uh, a basketball court that was on a slant. So if you're in the right-hand corner, you shot down. If you were in the left-hand corner, you shot up. And it was only half court. It wasn't a, there was no full court, but, um, it didn't seem to matter that much. We just played all the time. Um, and I, I also would like to acknowledge uh, several teammates who are no longer with us. Uh, Mike Long, uh, who tragically died shortly after high school uh, in a car accident, and um, Steve Uzwiak, who died of cancer again, shortly after high school. And of course, recently we lost Leslie Crutchfield, um, with whom I played, I don't know, countless uh, games of basketball on the, on the uh, playgrounds. Um, you probably look at me and go, well, his you know, best days of playing basketball are long ago. And that's probably true, but about a month ago, and I'm not lying, I found myself on a basketball court with Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley, and there were other players, and we had a pickup game. 
I was unstoppable. Of course, they're getting older, you know. <laughs> and, and when I had the ball in my hands, I thought, I can score at will. And I did. But the game didn't last long because I woke up. And it, it was 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's like, you just ruined the best game I've had in a long, long time. But, um, <laughs> okay, so I do want to uh, say that, you know, basketball is such a team sport. It's, it was such a joy. To me, that was the thing about playing. It was just the pure joy, and it didn't matter to me whether it was, uh, whether I was playing on a court in a playground or if I were playing for the, for the team, you know, whether it was a summer league or whether it was for the high school. Um, to me, it was just pure, unadulterated joy. And, and I think, you know, for the most part, life has been that way for me too. Although, you know, life has changed. And um, there's always challenge, but that's a good thing, I think, because we used to go around trying to find people to play against who were better than us because we wanted to get better. And um, so we would go to Westchester, we would go to Chester, we would go even sometimes into Philadelphia to try to find guys on the playground who were playing ball. Um, and I guess that's about all I need to say, except I want to thank the coaches that I had, Mr. Hines in junior high school, Mr. Molnar, and most of all, Mr. Ross Kershey. And, and Scott, I, I please give my regards to your dad um, and my appreciation because he really taught us how to play basketball. So that's about it. Thank you. I just want to also ask all of the inductees tonight, when the program concludes, please come up front Underneath this banner, we're going to move these tables with your plaques. We'll let you hold your picture plaque, which will be placed at the school, as we mentioned, for a group uh, photo. So at the end of the program, all inductees, please come up with your plaques and give us a few minutes to move the tables. Uh, once again, the winning 50-50 number tonight was 202-5299. Come up afterwards and um, collect the winnings. During the 2012 football season, the Red Raiders treated the Coatesville faithful to one of the most memorable seasons in school history. Entering his senior season that year, Chris Jones already had 13 career touchdowns and the reputation of being one of the really good ones. However, that magical season saw him move on to the list of one of the best wide receivers in school history. His 24 touchdown catches that year remain a school record. During the playoff run, Chris caught nine touchdown passes, solidifying his legacy as a big play receiver. The honors that Chris garnered in his career were well-earned and equally deserved. All Chesmont, all Southeastern Pennsylvania, first team all state, and selection to play in the East-West game, the Big 33 game, and finally the Valor Bowl catching three touchdowns in the process. The Hall of Fame is honored to introduce for induction, Chris Jones. I don't know how I'm gonna do after following after Kurt, but I'm gonna do my best. How about that? Um, 
First and foremost, I want to thank the Coastal Hall of Fame Committee for allowing me to join such a prestigious group. Not only does it value hard work in sports in high school, it also values what you have done after your high school preparation. Uh, to me, Coatesville football is not just a high school football team. It's a family, it's a community, and it's one thing about Coatesville football, it's culture. As a kid, I didn't know what was ahead like much of us all. I'm still learning while mentoring young men to find their purpose in life. I always thought my purpose was to play football, but like we all know, high school football comes to an end. It's nothing like playing with the guys you grew up with, suiting up for the Kid Raider football Saturday afternoons to suiting up Friday nights from, sorry, like I said, it's hard to follow. Um, so just so you know, I lived in every moment. I cherished every single one, from touchdowns to blocking to game plans to walkthroughs to Coach Ortega's house on Thursday nights watching college football, hoping one day that I'll get on the big stage. And that has come true. Go CCU, Coastal Carolina, Shana Clears. But going back to that senior year playing football, we all wanted to play just one more game as a senior. Being able to play 16 games in high school was an accomplishment, but losing in a state championship helped me build character. To do something no other Coachville football team has done, regardless of the outcome, was warming within itself. It brought hope and opportunity for those who followed Football has helped me earn a college education, travel the country, and also play in another country. Without football, I don't know how things would have turned out for me. Which is why I give thanks to those who supported me during that time and continue to support me. To To my number one supporter, Claudia DeVoe, as she continues to watch over me, I am not me without her guidance, love, and prayers. May she rest in peace. To my parents for gifting me with the ability to take on anything life throws at me. To the Glass family for their endless love and support driving me to practices, driving me to school, camps, workouts, always telling me to work hard and push myself to be better. To the Hunt family. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of y'all family. You guys always embrace me. The love and support never wavers. Plus, plus, Y'all gifted that man with the second to none arm. <laughs> and I truly believe I am not me without him. And I know it's vice versa. To my, to my many brothers, sisters, cousins, aunts, uncles, friends, teachers, coaches, thank you for your support, your knowledge, and your love. And lastly, to the city of Coatesville, once a Raider, always a Raider. Thank you. Our next inductee, Ashley Mendenhall Stauffer, is the third person this evening that follows a family member into the Hall of Fame, her grandfather, Bill Mendenhall Jr. Ashley was a three-year varsity starting catcher, culminating in an incredible senior season where she batted 460 with 40 hits, including 22 extra base hits and 11 home runs. Maybe more impressive than her offensive stats was her 983 fielding percentage. 
but the biggest accomplishment that 2017 season, especially to a team-oriented player, the girls' team won their first Chesmont title in 32 years and a berth in the state tournament. I would be remiss not to mention that Ashley was awarded the Congressional Scholar Athlete Award her junior year and finished in the top 25 in her graduating class. After leaving Cash, Ashley played four years at LaSalle University as a starter and earned the Scholar Athlete Award her senior season with a 3.98 GPA, the highest GPA in all of LaSalle athletics. The Hall of Fame is very pleased to present Ashley Mendenhall Stauffer for induction in the class of 2023. First and foremost, I would uh, like to begin by saying how truly grateful and honored I feel to be here tonight accepting this award and to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with all of these other incredible athletes. Um, my desire to compete for the red and black began when I was very young. Um, my dad and my grandfather comp were coaches and players here and my childhood was spent going to games. Uh, football games was a family tradition, basketball games. Um, like, like you said, my grandfather is a member of the honors of, of this community as well. And sometimes we would take trips down to the basketball um, facility to uh, go find his plaque just to make sure it was still there. <laughs> <laughs> so as a kid um, going to Coatesville, I knew that playing for the Red Raiders was uh, what was in store for me. As long as I worked hard and uh, put my mind to it, I knew I would get there someday. So uh, I started my athletic career at the young age of five, playing t-ball at Callen Little League like many other kids in the Coatesville area. Uh, throughout the years, I grew as a player, grew as a person, and made incredible memories with wonderful people um, and that's one of my favorite parts about coming back to play for Coatesville is though many of us went our separate ways and played for travel teams, the girls that I played with at seven were the girls that I graduated with on senior night. Our team was special. Um, we had so much love for each other and for the game. We worked hard as a unit, competed as a unit, and we had the most incredible balance of just having fun the whole time, but having the utmost desire to win. And I think that's one of the things that made me successful, is I had a wonderful team of, of girls who challenged me and pushed me um, and made me work hard so that I could come up big for us when we needed it. You know, you don't score and make RBIs by just hitting home runs all the time. So. They're special. <laughs> um, and all together, we came together and won our first Chessmont title. And for all of us, that was just the most incredible, incredible day. Um, so many years we had spent playing together and competing for Coatesville. And to, to bust that drought open was just a, a memory I'll never forget. Um, before I close, there are some people I want to thank. Um, to all my coaches who believed in me and pushed me, my teachers who saw the best in me and asked me to go to my full potential, to one of my favorite coaches who is here tonight, so, representing his uh, cousin as well, Coach Sean, I love you. <laughs> uh, to my grandparents and all my family members who came to every game and traveled across the country, my siblings, who uh, aren't here tonight, but were forcibly dragged to so many games that I'll give them a pass for not showing up tonight. <laughs> uh, to my husband, who I met at LaSalle, so another theme, <laughs> go explorers. <laughs> um, you're my best friend, and I love you very much. And thank you for supporting me. And to his family, who welcomed me with open arms. Love you guys, too. Um, and of course, to my parents, <laughs> who supported me emotionally, physically, financially. Uh, softball is expensive. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
I love you both, and I wouldn't be the person I am without you, but very specifically to my dad, my coach, my chemistry teacher, my travel buddy, <laughs> my number one fan. I'm the person and the player I am today because you committed to me way long ago. I love you very much, and thank you for being here today because we did this together, and you were my coach that senior year, so we really did it together. To be inducted into this Hall of Fame is uh, the greatest accomplishment of my athletic career, and to share it with my grandfathers and to have him here today to celebrate together is just completely unbelievable. Um, the skills that I, I gathered while learning here at Coatesville was just made me the person I am today and um, taught me so many life lessons that I now get to bring into how I treat my patients in the future as a physical therapist. And I cannot wait to um, go forth and be a part of this community and just uh, celebrate the red and black for the rest of my life. So to the committee, thank you for allowing me to uh, be a part of this and share this with my family. And I'm so proud to be a Coatesville graduate. Thank you. Uh, also like to let everyone know at the conclusion of our program tonight, the Country Club will provide four or five golf carts to transport anyone that's in the far reaches of the parking lot. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're kind of far away and uh, want to get a ride. Returning to the 2012 Red Raider football team, the Hall of Fame is ex extremely excited to introduce the young man who threw the touchdown passes to Chris. There were only a handful of past inductees who molded a Hall of Fame nomination in just one season. Emmett Hunt Jr. now joins that exclusive club. His statistics in 2012 are what make a Hall of Fame career. They include 3,123 yards passing and school records, 44 touchdown passes, and a 67% completion percentage. The accolades that followed are equally impressive. Second team All-State, Philadelphia Inquirer Player of the Year, Southeastern Pennsylvania Player of the Year, and the Cash Mark McWilliams Skilled Player Award. Emmett was also a key player on the basketball team for three varsity seasons and a two-year starter on the Red Raider baseball team, including the winning RBI in the 2013 District One Championship game. Away from the athletic arena, Emmett was an honor roll student while at Cash, and he continued his academic prowess by achieving Dean's List honors at Lincoln University. The Hall of Fame is proud to present for induction Emmett Hunt, Jr. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> uh, first, man, Kristen got me. I ain't gonna lie. Kristen got me, but first I gotta give honor to God because without him, nothing, none of this was possible. Um, starting out my cultural career here, like this moment was so far in the black, I couldn't even, you know what I mean? I couldn't even think about the Hall of Fame, you know. I have uncles that went into the Hall of Fame some years ago. Um, I would walk the streets of Coatesville and you know how you walk into something that you don't even know what you're walking into directly? Like my whole family is, is prestigious athletes and I'm just walking to Ash Park to be a kid and they're like, yo, you gotta do this because your uncle was this and your uncle was that and I'm just like, so before I ever even put on a Coatesville uniform, I felt like I had a standard that I had to reach. Um, I remember being six years old and um, being a water boy for the first time. And I believe, I don't want to mess his name up, but it was the older O'Hara brother that was still the quarterback at that point in time. And 
Watching him, he wore number seven, and I watched him, how he prepared for a game. And mind you, I'm seven years old at this point in time. Watched him, I followed him out to the tunnel. We walked through the tunnel. I hear the band going, doom, 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 and my love for Coastal football just took off. I couldn't imagine ever playing anywhere else. Um, I just dreamed about the moment of when we could finally get there. And the minute that I got my chance to play, I felt like I was ready because I was preparing for it for umpteen for my years at this point. Um, I don't want to get off topic. I want to stay on topic. <laughs> I really do. Um, Coastville sports, it has a rich history, as we all know, which is why we're all here tonight. Um, but the one thing that I always followed and I knew through this football program, the way that I like to play the game wasn't typical in Coatesville. Um, I didn't really like running the ball. As funny as that sounds, you know what I mean? I love throwing it. So when I got to the point where I was able to build the arm strength, you know, to be the player that I wanted to be, I was worried that when I finally got to high school, I was going to be forced to run the triple option, right? God bless his coach Ortega to come in ninth grade. And we still ran it in ninth grade, but by the time I was uh, hitting the varsity mark, we transformed into a pro-style offense which fit me perfectly, you know what I mean? And I thank him for that, Ortega. I do thank you for that. Just for allowing me to be me. You didn't ask me to be anything else. Um, and you formed that program around me in 2012 to fit my strengths. And I can't thank you enough for that. Um, other thank yous that I have to give out, number one is to my parents. Um, like many other the athletes, many other athletes that have been up here, my parents sacrificed, man. Um, running a business, and not just a business, but a business that never stops. Never stops. And I can't remember a game, a practice, that they weren't at. And to the point where they sacrificed so much that they didn't even tell me about my dad's health condition while I was playing. They allowed me to be who I was through high school. They never stopped me. They guided me, gave me everything. You know, I can't say everything I wanted because kids want the world, you know what I mean? But <laughs> more than what I needed. So mom and dad, I thank you for the discipline, the morals, the heart that you instilled in me, and I still carry it to this day. And I try to do the same thing for my kids. To my uh, sisters, um, we've been through a lot. We've been through a lot. And it's hard to really, it's hard to sit up here and not get emotional about it because if y'all understand our story, you will understand why I feel the way I do about them. If it wasn't for, especially my sister Didi, if it wasn't for you, I don't know where I would be, period. Um, I would like to thank my family and friends that travel from afar. I had a fr you know, friends come from California, had family travel from DC, Chicago, all over the freaking country just to come support me on this night, you know what I mean? So it means a lot to me. Um, and I wanna give a special thank you to my brothers. Uh, not even all of them are here, are able to be here because of other reasons. But the ones that are here, y'all mean more to me than a little bit. You know what I'm saying? The stuff we talked about, how grounded you kept me, the ones that didn't play football, they were in the stands every single game for that playoff run. And it meant a lot to me. It meant the world to me. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Chris Jones, Vinnie Williams, and Dre Boggs. 
because without them, there is no Hall of Fame inductee. There is no record-breaking season, no state championship run. When I tell y'all we worked, we worked. When nobody was looking, we worked. Ash Park, we worked. So when I, when I talk about myself, I, it's hard to just talk about my own accolades. That's why, because there's so many people that's a part of this puzzle and a part of this journey that I had, especially coming through coastal football. Um, I want to thank Coach Fearless, who's not here to, able to be here tonight. Uh, Coach Nick Fearless was, um, he was the reason why I became the player that I was. He taught me how to read defenses. He taught me how to do correct footwork. He allowed my arm to be my best weapon. You know what I mean? So I can't thank him enough. Um, and the last coach that I want to thank, he didn't even coach me in football, but he coached me in Little League. And uh, that's Coach Mark Bailey. Uh, he instilled in me at a very young age about accountability and how to lead. And that carried me on, you know, as I got into my high school career. And uh, I don't want to be up here too long. I feel like I'm up here too long already, you know what I mean? But the last thing I am going to say is the Coastville community, man, Y'all, it's so different here. I've been every, I've been a lot of different places, but there is nothing like this red and black, and I mean that. When we came home from that 2012 game, the way we, the way we lost. It's not even the fact that we lost. It was the way we lost. And Chris, you know what I'm talking about, Vinny. <laughs> it's the way that we lost, right? But when we got back, we were all half sleep on the bus, and when we got back, we just hear all these sirens and. We thinking, you know, not the. <laughs> I'm covered. <laughs> well, like I said, we thinking that something bad happened in Coatesville. We all know how it goes. And the fact that we came through town and you guys were on the lights, on top of the traffic lights, filled the whole streets up with love. I will never forget that for as long as I live. And I love you guys. Thank you to the committee for selecting me. Um, and that's all I got for you guys today. Also, I just want to once again remind all of the inductees to please come up at the end of the program with your plaques so we can get a uh, class picture. Our final inductee of the evening is also the second point guard to enter the hall this year. Joseph Butch Hills joins an elite group of point guards who donned the red and black. Assists were under-recorded during his years as a starter, but by looking at the scoring averages of his teammates, 20 points per game, 13 points per game, and 12 points per game, and knowing that Butch was feeding them the ball, you could understand what his assist totals were. As the floor general during his two varsity seasons, he helped the Raiders to a record of 61 and seven, including a District One championship and a trip to the PIAA Eastern Finals. Butch also managed to score 440 points in his career, 88th on the all-time list. He continued his playing career at Kutztown University, earning all PSAC honors three different seasons, culminating in a Division II All-American selection in 1987. He was inducted into the Kutztown Hall of Fame in 1997. I present for induction Joseph Butch Hills. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Coatesville, I love, love Coatesville. So happy to be here. Um, it's been, been, been a time, guys. Overdue, sometimes people say overdue, but it's in God's speed. I am truly blessed to be standing here today, truly. And I would like to just say thank, to, thank you to God for allowing me uh, to just received such a, a great honor. 
and just to be a part of the Coastville family. Um, Coastville is everything to me, and like I said, to win this one and to be a part of uh, this, this uh, prestigious um, award of 200 and some athletes, to, and Lord knows we had thousands that come through. But um, I would like to first thank my mom and dad. Mom and dad, stand up for me. Where you at over there? Mom and dad. <laughs> Guys. I, hey. Let me tell you why they're still standing. Uh, Mom just celebrated 81 years. Dad just, third, um, just celebrated 83 years of um, birthday, and then they just celebrated 53 years of marriage. Yes, so I am so proud of them. Guys, I come from um, Merchant Street. Merchant Street is where it all started from. Merchant Street, you had Elm Street. Um, you had the likes of uh, the Baileys, the Washingtons, uh, the Hunts, you know. Um, I watched all those guys and they all watched over me. You, you got that corner over there, you got Mark and, and, and Dennis and, and Francis and, and Doug and, and Steve, Dr. Miles. He's the um, reason why I'm actually standing here because Dr. Miles was the one that put all this information together uh, for the Hall of Fame committee. Um, so when they actually seen it, and I just say thank you, Dr. Miles, for uh, doing an awesome job. Thank you. Uh, and I also, I seen my, my two ninth grade coaches, uh, Doc, I mean, uh, Mr. Rohde and Mr. Goggler. Uh, they were so intricate in me, um, you know, getting my basketball career started at such an early age. Um, we had Coach Googie. Uh, Coach Scoog helped me out a whole lot. Uh, then I got that phone call, guys. Um, you know, well, let, actually, let me back up. Uh, S U P E R, super bad, that's what we were. Uh, that 1981 squad, 81 squad, we never played in front of not a packed house. We played in front of the, uh, actually, we played in the Coastville gym. And at the halftime of the JV game, if you didn't have a seat, you wasn't going to get in there because it was always crowded. And we always played, you know, 1,200 strong. And um, it was just one of those teams that was, we was pretty dominant. And that was our song, getting riled up, coming out of that tunnel. Um, that's what we sang, S-U-P-E-R, super bad. That's what we were. Uh, we were 35 and 2 that year my senior year, 35 and two. And I had a breakout game. Actually, it wasn't really the game. It was actually a moment, a breakout moment for me. Um, end of one of the playoff games, uh, about 10 seconds left in the game. And this actually propelled me into the spotlight when I was able to uh, dunk my first ball uh, in a game. And in that two-hand dunk uh, in that playoff game, uh, set me to different heights and you know, basically propelled me to you know, different, different levels of, of stardom. Uh, and then four years out of high school. But before I got there, I had Soup, who affectionately calls me Sugar Hill. You know, that's my nickname, Sugar Hill Big Wheel, where I'm from. Y'all know the deal. <laughs> But anyway, um, he always, uh, you know, called me sugar, and those guys always encouraged me, you know, to go back to school, go back to school, go back to school. And then finally that day came, uh, Mr. Kershey uh, called me. I'm working at the Hess gas station, 7th Avenue, and I get the phone call, four years out of high school, guys, and they said, well, do you want to go back? And I said, you must be kidding. <laughs> and um, I said, absolutely. So. Uh, when I get there, and it was called the Coatesville Connection. That was Marty, Jody, and myself. We all got that, uh, all got scholarships in 1985 uh, to go to uh, Kutztown. And when we went to Kutztown, we used to, when we were here in Coatesville, we used to plan in front of uh, sellout crowds. But up in Kutztown, we could hear crickets <laughs> uh, when we first got in there. But we changed the fabric. Um, that third year, we ended up uh, 
you know, selling out that, those, those gyms at that time, and it was uh, the best time. And I thank Marty, um, my, Marty um, my, my teammate, who's uh, here to support me today, and all my family members and all my friends and everybody that, that came here today. I'm so supportive, I mean, I mean so appreciative of, of the, uh, the moment. And the best moment from college to me, guys, is when I met my wife. My wife, Karen, where you at, honey? My wife over there. Uh, we just celebrated uh, 35, 35 years together, 31 years of marriage. Uh, and then I have two daughters. Uh, Talissa and Lynn, stand up for me, loves. They're my girls. And when you say daddy's girls, they daddy's girls. You know what I mean? When um, the wife, they, they cut the umbilical cord. Um, that's when daddy took over because uh, uh, they, they, they're, they've been at my side ever since. And I just want to thank everybody uh, for being here. Thank all the inductees prior and present. And I want to leave you guys with just one thing. I want everybody to stay away from steel people. What is he talking about? The people that are still living in the past, the people that are still complaining, the people that are still broke, the people that are still making excuses, the still people, uh, the people that are still um, making no effort, and then most of all, stay away from the haters. Have a great night, love all you guys, and thank you again. This concludes tonight's program. Thank you for joining us and honoring this year's induction class. And we hope to see you on the third Saturday in October 2024 when we will be inducting another fantastic group of athletes. Thank you and drive safe. <laughs>